Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise now we're going to be looking at uh, confidence interval estimates. So here I've got some data taken uh, from a Tiny Magazine article. I think I've used this data before and I made some uh, fairly strong assumptions with it last time I used it. Uh, here we'll weaken some of those assumptions a little bit. We're looking at average salaries, average starting salaries uh, by college major for a few different disciplines. So what we're going to do here is look at, uh, these are our sample means now. I think in a previous video I may have treated these as population means just to make a point. Uh, but here now these are all samples. We know this isn't population data. So this is going to be uh, my sample mean for engineers. Here's my sample mean for computer science, sample mean for math and science, business, and let's call this agriculture. Although I don't think I need all of those. So these are our means. And then what we're going to do is calculate an interval estimate around these sample means uh, as an estimate of the unknown true population mean mu. The one assumption I'm going to make here is this standard deviation of $6,410. So part A, using a sample size of n equals 100, uh, calculate 95% confidence interval uh, for the average salary of an engineer. So what we're going to do here, I, I, again, I'm making assumptions because I'm just playing with different data here. But let's assume here first that we're going to have a sample size of 100. Uh, that gave us this sample mean of 64,891. So the first thing that we can do is calculate our standard error. So the standard error is going to be the standard deviation divided by the sample size. And so here this is 6410, oops, 6410 divided by uh, square root of 100. So that's 6,410 divided by 10, so 641. Now, I want to also determine the margin of error. Well, the margin of error is just the critical value times the standard error. So what we need here is to figure out what is that critical value. So if we go to our Z tables, the 95% is probably the most common. So you'll, you maybe will have this one memorized soon enough. So I go to my Z tables, and so here I'm looking for 0.025 which I can find is right here. And so that gives me a critical value of 1.96. So here's uh, negative 196. That gives me this area of 2.5 in the lower tail, 2.5%. And because this distribution is perfectly symmetric, I know that positive 1.96 will give me that area of 2.5% in the upper tail, leaving me, of course, then with 95% uh, between those two values, right? So I've got uh, my critical value is 196. So my my uh, margin of error is x bar plus or minus 1.96 times 641. So we can figure out what that's going to be here. 1.96 times 641. So 1256.36. OK. So finally, to find our interval limits, that sample mean we're going to use is 64,891. And to calculate the limits, let's uh, start fresh. 64,891 uh, 64, plus 1256.36, so 66,147, 66,147.36, and my lower limit, 64,891 minus 1256.36, so 63,63,4, 63, 63,4, 63, uh, 64. So there we have our first answer for part A. We have our confidence interval from 63, 63, 4.64 to 66, 
So I always ask my students, you know, so what? <laughs> so here we have these numbers, what the heck do they mean? So in this case, a simple uh, single population confidence interval, what this means is that we're 95% sure, 95% confident that uh, the starting salary for an individual who majored in engineering would be between these two values, so between 63,634 and 66,147. So 95% confident. Uh, sometimes we say it's 19 out of 19 times out of 20, right? Because that equals 95. So there's a 5% chance that it doesn't. Two and a half percent chance that it's bigger than that. Two and a half percent chance that it's smaller than that. Okay. Uh, moving on, using, using a sample size of 100 calculated 99% interval estimate. So now we're going to go through a uh, similar exercise, similar process, but uh, what's going to change? Well, our sample size is the same, our standard deviation is the same, uh, so that means that the standard error isn't going to change, but now our confidence level is changing, and so that means that our critical value in here is what's going to change. So instead of now being 1.96 because that corresponds to 95%. Well, now I need to look for that critical value that corresponds with 99%. And so I need to look for, let's see, if this is 1 minus alpha is 0 0.99, that means that alpha is 0 0.01. And what I'm looking for isn't, isn't alpha, but it's alpha divided by 2. So that's 0 0.005. So alpha for 0 0.005, let's just see where that's going to take us. We're going to be right about here, right between these two, really. 0 0.005. So that's going to be, if we come this way, this is negative 2.5. And I'm right in between here. So that's going to be 2.75 if we really want to get precise uh, about it. So that's Z alpha divided by 2 is 2.575. Let's just keep it a little bit easier. We'll just round it 2.57, 58. Just to eliminate that third decimal, it's not going to change much for us. So then I can come back to my exercise. This is plus or minus 258. And so now my interval estimate, well, now it's going to be larger, right? Because now I'm increasing my confidence. So 99% sure that it's between these two values, right? 99% sure it's between these two, 95% chance it's between these two. As my confidence goes down, I can be more and more and more precise, but as my confidence goes down, of course, there's a greater chance of error, right? I can say I'm 100% confident that, you know, it's between, I can't get far enough apart. That's between these two numbers, right? 100%. <laughs> as I get, as I decrease, sorry, as I increase, what am I trying to say? As I decrease my confidence, right? That value gets smaller and smaller and smaller because greater possibility of, of error. So let's, uh, let's figure out what these numbers are going to be here. So we have our sample mean. That hasn't changed. That is still 64,000. Let's write that down. This is still 64,891. And now, 64,891 plus this margin of error is 258 times 641. Whoa, that can't be right. 64,891 plus. 2.58 times 641, 66,544, 66,544, and on the low end, 64,891 minus 2.58 times 641, 63,237. Oh, was that right? Yeah. I'm kind of taking uh, taking the decimals casually. I'm just rounding it a bit. So there we have our 99%. So 63, 237 to 66, 544. 
So notice that, again, when our confidence interval increased, those limits became further and further apart. I'm, I'm more confident because I'm, I've got a larger interval of numbers, so there's a greater possibility that it's between these values because they're further apart. Now we're going to use, oh, look at that, engineers again, but I'm increasing the sample size. So we're going to look at sort of the same exercises, uh, part A, but now we're going to change the sample size, which means that relative to our cal uh, part A calculations, we're back to a 95%. So what that means is that our critical value is back to 1.96, but our, mar our standard error changes now. So instead of being the square root of 100, this is now the square root of 150. And so what's that going to do then to our calculations? Well, let's find out. 6410 divided by square root of 150. So 523. 523. So now that, let me keep the decimals there though actually. 52337. So now that standard error is reduced because I have a larger sample and so it's going to be more robust. This will be a, a more robust estimator of that, uh, of this, the true population mean, right? So it's a point estimate, now it'll be uh, more of a robust estimate. And so what's that going to do? Well, if the standard error is smaller, the margin of error is going to be smaller. And so let's just see what happens here. I don't want to spoil the surprise. So let's do some calculations here. This is now 1.96. Oops, let's start with our, our mean 64.891 plus 1.96 times 523.37. So 65.916. And that's from that same mean 64.891. Oops, I said 1 and I wrote 9. There we go. And now the lower limit, 64,891 minus 1.96 times 523. 63,865. So 63,865 to 65,916. So there you can get some idea of the relationship between the width of these confidence intervals and how it relates to the sample size and how it relates to our confidence level. So if we increase our confidence level, that interval becomes wider. As we increase our sample size, uh, that confidence interval becomes more narrow. So for a given confidence interval, 95%, let's say, the higher our is our sample size, the more robust will be that point estimate. Uh, so that standard error is smaller, uh, which means that we can have a, a, the same level of confidence at 95%, but with a higher sample size, it will be a more narrow or more precise uh, interval estimate. So there you have it. I hope that that all made sense. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.